Uh, good morning, boys. It's Mr. Ebenezer here. I hope you're doing okay and uh, your families. Uh, as I said to you last week, I'm going to send you a video every week which is going to focus on our three pillars of boys, the Christian faith and enterprise. Uh, let me begin by saying I'm sorry I'm dressed like this today. I'm about to play some sport with the boys who are in school because their mams and dads are key workers. So apologies that I'm not in a shirt and tie. Uh, I'm sure you can see past that today. Um, so three pillars. The first is boys. And let me tell you a story like I did last week about a boy who um, I think is a bit of a hero and uh, would like you boys to aspire to be like and find him an inspiration. His name is Desmond Doss. Maybe some of you have learned about him in history or know about him. Uh, he uh, was called up to the Second World War to fight. But because of religious reasons, he wasn't allowed to carry a gun and he wasn't allowed to threaten another human life, which, as you can imagine, was a bit inconvenient uh, during the Second World War. And lots of the other soldiers made fun of him and uh, ridiculed him because they didn't think he was a proper soldier. But uh, he was serving as a field medic in Okiawa when the Japanese attacked his unit on top of a cliff. And uh, they cut down nearly every single man. And Doss quickly rigged up a stretcher that could be lowered by a series of ropes and pulleys to the ground below. And then, by himself and under fire, he retrieved each soldier in his unit, one at a time, and lowered them to safety. Uh, apparently he saved probably 75 soldiers and uh, President Truman gave him the Medal of Honour. He was a real hero. There's lots and lots of different ways he was a hero, not just that one example. And so uh, maybe over these next few weeks and months, you could read more about him. There's a documentary about him called The Conscientious Objector. But Desmond Doss, even though um, he couldn't uh, carry a gun, even though he couldn't do lots of things that other soldiers were doing, he thought of a way to be a real hero and saved many, many lives. And that's why I want to uh, use that example today to link to an important enterprise skill of teamwork. And uh, I believe, in a very real sense, the country at the moment is at war. Um, we can't see the enemy, but we're very much at war. And during war, you always need heroes. And there's lots of different ways to be a hero. I hope on a Thursday evening at 8 o'clock every week, you stand on your front doors and you clap your hands and hit pots and pans to show our appreciation to the real heroes in the NHS who are on the front line and are doing so much good to save many, many lives. But you can be a hero. You can be a hero by staying at home. Um, be a hero by being a great son, a great brother, uh, your parents, great mams, great dads. Um, be a great neighbour. So work as a team to be a great family, um, a family of heroes during this time. And to do that, I think you need to be really unselfish and to put other people before you and think, not like an individual, what about me? But think like a team. So be a hero by working as a team, um, as your family, and if you're able to, as a group of neighbours to help those who are really going through a difficult time. And uh, that links to the Christian pillar. And I'm going to give you some verses from the Bible. Uh, one is found in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12. It's one of the commandments where we're told, honour your father and your mother. And then a book called Ephesians in the New Testament, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. The Apostle Paul, he says, children, obey your parents. In other words, respect your parents, uh, listen to mom and dad, uh, do what you're told. Sometimes you might not understand why you've been asked to do it. Sometimes you might not understand or even agree with what you've been asked to do. But just listen to mom and dad. And especially in these difficult days, just be a good boy, be a good son. Um, obey your parents. But maybe you're a parent and you're thinking, great, that's great news. But also in Ephesians, uh, it talks to fathers, but it can be talks to mums just as much. And it says, don't provoke your children to anger. In other words, um, be good parents, be a good dad, be a good man. And, um, and I think if we were all to do that, wasn't it, and listen to that advice, then it would make the next few weeks and months um, so much easier and so much better. And another verse I want to give you, and I want to link all this together, is found in Luke chapter 10, verse 27. 
where Lord Jesus Christ says, love your neighbor as yourself. And then somebody says, but who is my neighbor? And he goes and say, well, anyone who's in need, that's your neighbor. So I'm saying to you, I've given you an example of Desmond Doss, what a hero he was in the Second World War in an unconventional way. I'm encouraging you to be enterprising and really uh, the enterprise skill of teamwork, working as a team uh, in your families, maybe in your neighborhoods. And to listen to the advice from the Bible, isn't it? To, to obey mom and dad, um, to respect mom and dad. And then moms and dads, don't provoke your children. Be good parents. And all of us to be a good neighbor, to put other people in this uh, situation above ourselves. When I was growing up, I've told you this many times, boys, I grew up in a place called Ebervale. And um, I lived in a house. It was a small terrace house with three bedrooms. There were six of us in the house. And so my mum and dad had a room, and my two older sisters shared a room, and then I shared a room with my grandfather. And um, we didn't have very much. And uh, my sisters could be annoying, because that's the job of sisters, isn't it? Um, my mum could sometimes nag me, my dad could give me rows, and my grandfather, well, um, he could just be old sometimes. But can I tell you this to you? It was the happiest home a boy could ever grow up in. And uh, home wasn't home unless mam wasn't there. She was the center of the home. She was fun. She was always there. We played games. She could tell good stories. Um, she made Christmas and holidays amazing. And every night, she'd come into my room, kneel by my bed and pray with me. Every night. She was brilliant. And last August, she died. And do you know what? You old boys will never know how much I miss my man. And I'm sure that many of you at the moment are wishing you could be out and about. You're fed up of being at home. You're fed up of being stuck with mum and dad or your brothers and sisters. You wish you could be out um, with your mates. But can I encourage you during this time to be a hero and be a hero of being a really good son and a really good family and use this time to make memories. Remember I said to you before we broke up for coronavirus, build, strengthen, and repair relationships. Enjoy this time. Don't wish it away. And maybe, and you might find this hard to believe, but maybe you look back in years to come and think that the summer and spring of 2020 were really special. Be good boys. Be good sons. Uh, be unselfish. Work as a team. Uh, be a good neighbour. Help those around you if you can. And uh, two things my mother said to me, uh, she said it a lot of times, and it's come back to me an awful lot recently. She said, we've all lost sense of what's important. And she also said to me, no one has any time for anyone anymore. We're all too busy and too tired. And uh, she would phone me nearly every day. And do you know what? I look back now, in the last few years, I was usually too tired or too busy to speak to her. And I would do anything today for that phone in my office to ring and it'd be my mother. And I would drop everything <laughs> and I'd just speak to her. Uh, and so my point to you is this. You don't appreciate things till they've gone. And all of us maybe have lost any sense of what's really important. So use this time to be a family and to be unselfish, to work as a team and to really reevaluate what we think is important and what's not. And my mother would say all the time, I'm just a man. Um, she didn't do any paid work and uh, she was just a man, but she was a brilliant man. She was at the heart of a community. She was a good neighbor. Um, she looked after her family. She was kind, she was nice, she was unselfish. She was good company. And when she died in August, over 600 people came to her funeral. It's a lot of people, isn't it? And uh, I think it's really made me think about what's really important in life at the moment. We need to maybe reevaluate the things that we hold important. My career has gone pretty well, but if I had my time again, I'd do it differently. Because there's been times when I put work and things that I think important above family. And like I say, if I had my time again, I would do it all so differently. Remember Desmond Doss? 
and how he was a hero in a kind of unselfish way, really put the team first. Um, remember what I said to you about uh, family and, and using this time to really make it special, a time when you can get to know your family better, have good fun, don't wish it away. And maybe at the end of all this, you can be a real hero because you've just been a really good son, a really good brother, really good parents, really good family, really good neighbour. And maybe we come back with this whole situation and we're so much stronger as a son, a boy, a family, a school, a community, a country. We'll come through all of this thing. Do you know what? We're so much better than what we were when we went into it. Boys, I miss you. I uh, hope you're doing okay. Um, I take on board things I've said to you this morning. I'm off to play king. Um, and I hope you have a good day. Kamerovel, and I'll see you soon. Tchau,